Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to be like a follow-up on my quick video about the NES Mimi discontinue, and apparently it is official, uh, this is a new update, basically what's happening now is that not only the NES Mini discontinued in Nintendo of America, but in other countries they're starting to get discontinued. Even in Japan, the Famicom Mini is, well, they kind of said it was discontinued. Some people said it was hiatus. But the bottom line is, this is that it's done. If you want to get one, just by going to the store for 60 bucks, it's out of luck. You know, I'm cutting my losses either. Like, I really just want one, but I'm not going to go, like I said, I'm not going to go in the cold, fight someone for something that's $60 that I can just play in another system. Computer, wink, wink, but that's not the point, you know. So again, yeah, it is official worldwide. They're discontinuing the uh, plug and play system. Let's just say that the Famicom or the NES Mini. And again, for people who don't know, why is this a big deal versus the Sega, the Sega plug and play, or the Atari Flashback, or the ColecoVision, or this and this and that? Well, because. In the gaming community, it's Nintendo, and I said it before, and I said it again in multiple times in the in the vlog that if it wasn't for Nintendo, there wouldn't be video game. I grew up loving Nintendo. Even I had an Atari. I was too young to understand what video game is. I started to understand video game when it was uh, when I was introduced with the Famicom in my home country, and then later on the NES. So it has a nostalgia feeling that every old generation gamer who grew up in the 80s enjoy and they want to share with their family but what happened it's also a money opportunity for scumbag aka scalpers there you go and yeah and the sad part now is that even Pat the NES Punk basically said this is that the minute it was announced that the NES Mini discontinued the price of the NES Mini from those scumbag it skyrocketed more than 200 300 yeah I mean, you know, they're scumbags, but again, they're not really doing anything illegal unless they're getting it illegally, but, you know, that's a different story, but there you go. So, again, it is an unfortunate, it had a good direct, and then the next day, they announced it, and then it had a chain reaction. So, with that, what does it follow? Well, I've been listening to a lot of YouTube podcasts, and a lot of people talk about, like, what's the deal, and what's the, the objective behind it why they did what I did, and I did have my theories about it, well, I did say one, one of my theories could, like I said, was, maybe in the long run, it wasn't really making them money, all they were just doing, just trying to put their name out there during the holiday, because they really have nothing in the holiday, if you think about it, I mean, for the last game of 2016 was Paper Mario Color Splash, which wasn't even that good, from what I heard, and the very, I think, the very last game in a couple of months was from the 3DS. And those are Pokemon Sun and Moon and Super Mario Maker 3DS, which is an inf- sad to say, I hate to say this. It is good because it's a portable version, but it's also inferior because it doesn't connect to the internet. You don't have the ami- mystery mu- Amiibo. Well, Amiibo Mystery Mushroom. So, there you go. But again, you know, it's on the go, so people want to try it. They did talk about it. They wanted to try it, but they don't want to get the Wii U. That was it. And then the last game for the Wii U itself from Nintendo is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like I said, I've been playing on the Wii U. I enjoyed it. Uh, there's no, not much of a difference, but I think the, I heard the Zelda Switch was a bit better. But again, the experience is still the same. I can tell you that much. So, that's like one of my theory. that's why they did it. A lot of people had a theory I could probably agree. Is one of them is, it is a plug and play, it is a compilation virtual console game for $299 each, because it's $60. They were maybe Nintendo thinking that could hurt our virtual console business. Then nobody's going to buy them on the 3DS, because they're more expensive in my opinion. Or heck, even the Switch. Because there will be... Excuse me, virtual console on the Switch. It just, I don't know when. It's just, again, 
shouldn't be in the get-go, but, you know, they take their sweet damn time. Excuse the language, but, you know, it's Nintendo. So they probably didn't want to capitalize that. That's why they never do complications. That's one of them. I remember even the Lady Water basically did say is that a lot of the investors said, ever consider doing a compilation game with all this classic? You have an opportunity that's money. And they said, well, we don't believe in compilation because the reason is, is that to us, it's sort of that it's not really, it's not really going to make us money in, in our opinion. We'd rather set, buy it separately because we know our fan, our consumer prefer that way, which is bull crap. but the point is, it, yeah, it's a compilation, it's cheaper, but, like, do you really play all those games, or you want to pick one of them, but single, you know, there you go, but, again, another theory is, yeah, that's what, they said the most makes sense, another theory that I think was false, and I agree with it, was, oh, they hacked the system, because there were people who were hacking the system, putting more games in it, Maybe because again, Nintendo is very protective and they have zero tolerance when people hack their system. You know, the R4 for the DS and 3DS, you know, they had a, there was a court case on that one. So, yeah, they don't really like their system being hacked, but again, you know, what can you do? I mean, for Cell Slot said, the minute you buy the console, he, whatever you do, you have permission. You can do whatever you want. I mean, as long as you're not making money out of it to some extent, but. There you go, it is what it is. So, maybe that's a theory also. Another one, maybe, is that they are basically don't want to capitalize it on the Switch. Because, oh, the Switch is out. Why would you want something like Mini NES? Even so that there's two different audiences to some extent to what they want. But, you know, Nintendo doesn't think. They only want to focus on one thing and that's it. Again, that's a possibility. Or... Or what else I'm thinking. Or, yeah, the last one is maybe they're doing a better version. Maybe more expensive NES Mini. Or maybe they're doing a console that's very dedicated only to the virtual console. Like, <laughs> if that's all you like, that you don't care about the real game, just virtual console game. Maybe they're going to do it. It'll be like, it'll look like a, um, I have no idea what they're going to do. Maybe some weird hybrid of Nintendo, Super Nintendo N64. GameCube, heck, we, even we, even we, you, who knows? And maybe it'll have a memory slot, maybe a micro SD card, you know. So again, maybe there's gonna be a new one, and maybe this one's gonna be more pro- more production, more production than the NS Mini. So speaking of production, why is it? And I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Why is it that? The why didn't do a lot of NES Mini? Well, I said one is their strategy, their mentality in the past is be cautious, be pessimistic. So that was the first thing. They were being cautious because they always, when they build something, they always, well, now, not before, because I'll tell about a little bit what the history of Nintendo and why they had to change. Is that every time they do something, it has to basically have to think in the back of the head. What if it doesn't sell? They'll always have to think about that. They want a new idea, but they don't want to risk it. They always have to think to themselves in the back of their head. What if the idea, what if this product doesn't sell? What do we do? So for that solution was, let's not make a lot. Let's do some limited. Let's see if people are going to want it or not. And the problem is, people are talking about it. People are angry. You can pre-order. And because, oh, well, we didn't do a lot. And Kirishima's reason said, well, we didn't have the component. And apparently, people report said that the components were cheap, that it's easy to find. So it's kind of horse shit that what they said against his language. It's just that they're being, yeah, I think it makes more sense that they're being more pessimistic. That's all it is. They are being more pessimistic because they're afraid what if it doesn't sell. All right? So we're going to go back in time here about why this mentality even happened. They did it with the Amiibo. And they sort of did it with the Switch, sort of, because after the initial movement, they're doubling the production. But again, the Amiibo, they kind of did it until later on. And to some extent, with the Wii, they kind of did it. Why? Because during the 8-bit era and the, and the 16-bit era, they were dominant. They had all the games. Granted, they were kind of were dickheads, excuse the language, 
of why they were because there were a contract rule said if you want to put your game on a, a Nintendo console, whether the Super or the original NES, then you can't put it on another console. And if you put it on another console, you can't put it on the NES. So it has to be exclusive. That was the thing. But the problem was at the time, they were selling, so they didn't have a choice. They kind of left it by the 32-bit era because that's when the introduction of the PlayStation. They basically introduced what the console's all about. And a lot of the third party, they basically shift to Sony. So, after a while, they had uh, removed that rule of, oh, like, if you do it in another system, you can't do it on a... Uh, Nintendo console, they had to remove that because there are hardly any games on the N64. Uh, had a bad sale, believe it or not. The N, well, wasn't a bad sale? No, it wasn't really a bad sale for the N64. There were some people who were sticking with the N64. Heck, even at one point I was trying to get an N64, but then they were doing limited production. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, the N64 had a limited production. And again, same deal, but let's go back to the 60 bit. Or the 32-bit arrow. So when he had all the games, and there was even a story from Square Enix, and they said, at one point, they asked Nintendo, what are your medium you're going to use for the N64? They said, cartridge. They said, hmm, okay, we're going to go to Sony, and Sony even published Final Fantasy VII, if you didn't know. Yep, Sony had the funding, so they went to Sony, and apparently somebody at Nintendo, maybe Yamauchi, the late Yamauchi, someone said at Square Enix that Yamauchi told them, you know what? Yeah, go to Sony. Guess what? Don't come back. Don't expect us to support you guys. Screw you guys. I'm like, wow, really professional there. But again, you know, it's the Japanese business. And that's the problem also, especially during Yamauchi's time. Some former Nintendo developer work employees basically did admit they said that when working under Yamauchi, sad to say, there was some sort of dictatorship, sort of. Like, Yamuchi was being a dictator to some extent. I mean, not bad, but like he's the emperor, you have to follow him. A lot of people were kind of like having difficult times. They were happy when Iwata took over, and that's the reason some of the people love Iwata because he was the very opposite of what Yamuchi is in the case of how he treats the employees. Business wise, it's a different story, but there you go. Again, and if you want to wait, when the N64, why is it was limited for the N64? Because during, again, going back to the NES and the Super Nintendo, this 8-bit and the 16-bit, excuse me, is that they were dominant. They were dominated. They basically controlled the market. You couldn't really do anything about it. All you can talk about is Nintendo this, Nintendo that. They got cocky. They got arrogant. They were the best of the best. Nobody couldn't compete them. Sega couldn't compete them to some extent. Neo Geo couldn't compete them. Heck, Turbo Graphics, uh, Atari, well, to some extent Atari Lynx and the Jaguar, but I think the Jaguar was against the PlayStation. Nobody could compete them until Sony stepped in. When Sony stepped in, that was it. At the same time, Nintendo was trying to do something prior to the N64. It's called the Virtual Boy. Sadly, Gumpa Yokoi. You know, the late Gunpo Yoko, very genius, very smart. He's the one that created the Game Boy. He's the guy who created the Game Boy. He also the one that did the Wonder Swan when he left Nintendo. And if you wonder why he left Nintendo, because of the failure of the Virtual Boy. What happened, there were a lot of rumors speculating. One, it wasn't really meant to be red. It was actually meant to be color, believe it or not. Like, uh, Game Boy Color, I think, supposedly uh, color, but it is supposed to be colored. Again, rumor never been proven, sadly. But the upper management, along with Yamauchi, basically wanted to bring this, wanted to be released a year before the N64. Because there was a rumor they were gonna release it simultaneously to some extent, or even after the N64, excuse me. Because it's going to be two different systems. And there was even a rumor. Again, a rumor. Again, and the rumor is not proven. I'm sorry. But there was a rumor that the Virtual Boy was going to be integrated with the N64. So what does that mean? 
Well, think of it as of right now, the PlayStation VR. Remember the PlayStation VR? You know, like 360, but still in the game. And it is a different experience from what I heard. They were going to do that with the N64. I'm not, I'm no joke. Again, that was a rumor. If it was true, it would be flipping awesome. So imagine using the Virtual Boy as your screen playing Super Mario 64. Just think about that. But again, like I said, I don't know if this is true. It is a rumor as of right now. It is a rumor that people just say, well, forget it. It's been in the past. Statute of limitation. You know, it's one of those court things, <laughs> law things, cop thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the point is, it's been so long that nobody really cares. But again, to some, well, to some extent, and again, it's never been proven that it wasn't even proven or defunct. No one knows. The bottom line is, is that there was some sort of integration. They wanted to do an integration, but that really just didn't really work. So, but of course, like I said, the Virtual Boy failed. So that's when the start of oh man, what's happening to Nintendo? We're we're not we can't be like this. We can't we're not supposed to be failing, but they were because the PlayStation dominant, the PS2 era, the GameCube again, one of the poorest selling console. Believe it or not, he said what? Yeah, it had good Nintendo games, but that was it. Third-party games were there, but people weren't buying them to a point that IDOS, Midway, EA basically jumped, abandoned ship, and they said we're not going to do any more games on the GameCube unless um, there was a deal. And they, even Nintendo had to make some deal, like in Mortal Kombat Deception, you can play uh, Shao Kahn and Goro. EA Sports game had Nintendo characters, like the Basketball game had Mario, Luigi, and Princess, along with the s- s- snowboarding, even the, one of the fight, final round, fight round four, I think, I don't know the name, it had Little Mac on the GameCube version, I mean, there was, they were doing some exclusive, just to say, oh, you'll buy it, because there's Nintendo characters in it, and kind of didn't really work, people didn't really give a hoot about it, so, again, there were a lot of GameCube, but the PS2 was dominating. It was the weakest of the console, but it had games. At the end of the day, it had games. That's why with the Wii, there were limited production. And they had a good, different approach because they, they couldn't compete with the PS3 and the 360, so they're basically is motion control for the family, the casual, the kids who never played video games. Wii Sports was the most popular game during the Wii Live console life cycle, and people bought the Wii just for that. I can see why it's fun. Had some other games, but again, had its own game. There were some exclusive, but of course, you rather just play it on the PS360 for some of them. And uh, motion control died out. But again, from the beginning, people couldn't really get a Wii until a year after, finally. So they trying to rectify that with the Wii U, and look what happened. Nobody give a hoot about the Wii U. It had games. It had it had Nintendo game. Well, the sad part is because it didn't have any Nintendo game because Nintendo didn't understand HD. They said they were having hard to doing HD graphic, which to some extent some company also had a problem the transition. Heck, even Sony and Microsoft to some extent, believe it or not. The difference is they were prepared. Nintendo wasn't. That was again because of the Japanese company. Their procedure didn't work. Them. What is that procedure? Well. The procedure with the Wii U was they do that system first. Once they're confident, they start doing the game. In the case with, let's just say, Sony and Microsoft, it was the opposite. While they're fixing the system, trying to understand the system, they're already doing the games. They're already trying out the game, understanding the HD. And they're doing that prior to the release of the console. See what I'm getting at? So during the PS2, the consumer playing PS2, Xbox game, and GameCube to some extent, the, de- the, the game developers, the company, they're already starting to understand what new console is. The PS3, the 360, the HD. Nintendo didn't because what they do? Oh, they had a ramp up GameCube with motion control. So when they finally were ready to go to the transition to the Wii U, 
yeah, they basically were flabbergasted and they couldn't bring out the game to a point that they admitted, yeah, there was no Nintendo game on the Wii U until August of the next year, if there was at least 2013, was they didn't understand it, it took longer, there were delays, and there you go. Uh, they, again, because Nintendo strategy wasn't working for them. So again, maybe this is the reason why the NES Mini wasn't, they didn't do a lot, because they think, well, what if it doesn't sell? Well, we're trying to target an audience, and it's not working, because from what I heard, the NES Mini, the people who wanted the NES Mini are the nostalgic, the people who grew up playing the Nintendo, the NES. They're trying to cater to the new gamers, the kids, that plays mobile game, Minecraft, and they want to play to some extent big boy games like you know shooters, bro games, and they're trying to target that, and it wasn't working. They said, "Well, I guess, well, I guess the N- the NES Mini wasn't really a success because they want to target a certain group." And yeah, Kirishima kept always saying this: women and children. You want to target them. The reason they keep saying that again, the old mentality that you don't ever support your friend, which is wait, what again? You're right. You should support your family because if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't, you wouldn't be getting any profit. But the mentality is always in, to some extent, even uh, sadly during the PS2 era, Ben Herman even said the same thing, that we don't cater to fans because they don't make money, which is somehow true if you don't have, any, if you don't have a lot of fans. But if it wasn't for your fans, you wouldn't really make some money. I mean, again... That's why even Sony, even Microsoft, to some extent, they're changing their ways. They're also finally listening to the fans to some extent if it benefits them. Even if they're only less fans. But then they're saying, well, word of mouth, talk about the game, the more people will basically jump in. And, uh, yeah, but Nintendo right now is like, well, well, you know, the fans are making, we're buying this, but we don't, we want new people. We want more audience. Well, you're not going to get it if you're not going to start with your fans. It's just it's not going to work. Because your fans are the ones going to give you the word of mouth about the system, whether they're good and bad, should you get it or not. Without them, the general consumer, they're not going to know. They're not on the known. I mean, for crying out loud, the NES Mini was in news. It was on Good Morning News. It was on other things rather than just video game. And it's sad to say, I guess even Nintendo, again, not the American, Nintendo of Japan probably didn't get that. They said, uh, well, you know, the kids are not buying this, you know, we want the kids. But the point is, a lot of people knew about it because it has an historic legacy in it. And, uh, well, well, they're going to just continue it because, you know, again, like I said, I gave the theory in the beginning. I don't know which one true. I can't wait, probably next week, finally they're going to do the fiscal year. Yes, their fiscal year of 2016, 2017. Well, I'm just going to say 2016, 2017. Let's just say that. That's going to be next week. And, yeah, I will be probably giving my thoughts about that. So, again, yeah, that's my follow-up. That's my theory, maybe. And, like I said, it kind of relates in the past. And I know I did talk about it, but, again, just... Maybe it's connection, maybe not. Like I said, it could be wasn't selling, or maybe it was kind of, it's capitalizing on their virtual console. Maybe they want to focus on the Switch. Maybe they didn't get the sale that they wanted. Of course, you're not, because the audience that were getting it were not there. It's either the nostalgic or the scumbags. Again, no one knows. Probably next week they'll basically talk about it. They'll probably have an excuse, whatever, but it is what it is. So that's my thoughts about the follow up on the discontinue um, mini NES. And it's kind of shame, but at the same time, it's Nintendo of Japan. They're no company, they're a Japanese company. It sucks. I know. So, with that, thanks for listening.